Uh, Tamilan Da says, sir, is organic chemistry hard? Uh, what is your tips to learn it effectively? That is a great question. This might actually be good enough for, a, for like a clip that I, can, that I can upload. So the question is, is organic chemistry hard? And what are your tips to learn it effectively? So I think most people would agree that organic chemistry is hard. And obviously, I don't mean to be too analytical here, but, um, you know, when you say hard or easy, you're just talking about like hard or easy, easy relative to something else, right? So harder than the average college class? Absolutely, especially, you know, things like, you know, any kind of humanities or like philosophy or anthropology or U.S. history or anything like that, or even like some of your basic, you know, like biology one or anything like that. Yeah, organic chemistry is a lot harder than that. Um, the, the concepts are, are much more advanced. There's a lot more stuff that you might have to memorize. Um, also, organic chemistry relies heavily on um, your art, you know, how well you are with sort of drawing three-dimensional uh, molecules on a 2D sheet of paper, you know, using like the, the wedges and dashed lines, the wedges project forward and the dashed lines sort of project away from the page and then just the straight, um, you know, regular weight lines. <laughs> They're kind of in, in the plane of the, the board or in the plane of the page, right? So, yeah, organic chemistry is, is definitely definitely a challenge for, for most people, um, you know, but then again, you always have those people who can just breeze through it because they just, you know, they just have a brain that's sort of compatible with it. Um, I think I have a brain that's probably more compatible than most people with organic chemistry, but that doesn't mean that it was easy for me, especially organic too. And also, you know, a, a lot of it depends on, you know, how good your pr professor is. I mean, my, you know, I'm not trying to talk too much shit, but like my professor for organic two just wasn't good. I mean, and, and I, I don't mean that he like, you know, he just, he, his natural abilities of teaching weren't good. What I mean is that he just didn't really give the effort. He didn't give enough effort. And you can tell, like he would literally, he would use the the dot cam, like the overhead cam that looks down. Every every uh, lecture hall at this university had one. He would use that, and he would just bum a sheet of of notebook paper from a student. He didn't even have his own like educational teaching materials ready to go. Oftentimes, there was one time where he even admitted it was like during the World Cup, and he was like a big soccer fan. Uh, or you know, association football for the people for you people who don't know it by the name soccer. You know, he was it was like during the World Cup, and he actually admitted to coming in um, to our class hungover. So, you know, because of that, I, I think you know, I, I think my experience with organic chem two would have been a lot better if I had a professor who was you know was actually passionate about teaching. Because you'll find that you'll find that a lot of professors, you know, they just kind of have to teach. They're more passionate about the research than they do than the than the, the students that they teach or the you know the actual teaching of the content. So um, you know, a lot of it's just kind of a flip of the coin or a roll of the dice on on what kind of professor you get. Um, but so the second part of your question was, what are some tips to learn it effectively? And that's such a good question. I, I've wanted to address this for, for a really, really long time. And I'll do like a little bit of storytelling. Um, and I think that'll kind of help segue into, into, the, into answering the question. So I remember when I was taking organic chemistry and, you know, occasionally like I would study in groups with people and, you know, we, I, it wasn't just chemistry majors because organic chemistry has a lot of, you know, it has like, you know, chemistry majors are a small component of like this big organic chemistry class. There's a lot of, I think mostly pre-med students or students who are going for like micro molecular biology, things like that. Um, so there's all kinds of students in there, but I could always tell which students were the pre-meds. <laughs> and the reason why I could tell which students were the pre-med students is because all they cared about was the grade that they were getting. You know, they, they were coming from like their starting point was, okay, this is the grade I want. You know, I want it, you know, top of the class or, you know, I want like an A or, you know, I want to do better than X, Y, Z student or whatever. It, it was like coming from a place of competition rather than a place of understanding the chemistry concepts. And in my opinion, that is not really a good approach um, because there's always going to be people who score better than you. Um, and there's always going to be people who score not as well as you. And I, personally, I think that a better approach is because I'm not just interested in, in receiving an A. I mean, yeah, if I can get an A, 
that's great. But the truth of the matter is that, especially for, for chemistry majors, the truth of the matter is your GPA isn't really as important as like the independent work that you do as an undergraduate researcher. Um, but, I, but to answer the question though, I know I'm kind of rambling a lot, but to, to answer your question, I think that starting from, okay, how do I understand these concepts better? How do I understand these principles and how do, how do I apply them? Uh, to all these situations, like, you know, just immerse yourself is what is what I would recommend doing is to immerse yourself in the knowledge, in the principles, in the practice problems, in the content, you know, become intimately familiar with the chemistry. And I promise if you if you take that approach, a good grade will certainly follow, you know, and, you know, the other thing, too, is, you know, I was saying practice problems earlier. That's really, really important. Practice, 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 practice. You know, do all of your assigned homework. And then when you're done with that, do all of your assigned homework again. Or maybe you can find some other problems that are that are sort of similar that you can. Because really, like, organic chemistry is, you know, it, it's not like a um, chemistry in general, uh, but especially organic chemistry. It's not like, you know, some history class where you have to, you know, remember, uh, you know, some date that some historical figure did something, right? You know, it, it's not like a bunch of random factoids that you remember and then just toss away and never use them again. Organic chemistry is about learning principles from the ground up. It's very accumulative, which means that if you have a poor understanding of early concepts, you don't have a good understanding, you don't have a good chance of having a good understanding of concepts later on. So it's a very, very important to, you know, pay attention and study hard from the beginning, from like day one, when you, when you step into that general chemistry course, uh, learning it from the ground up. So it's, it, what you do is you take those, those principles and then you apply them to several, several different situations. So that's what organic chemistry is all about. And the more situations to which you apply those principles, the more practice that you do, um, the better off you'll be. And, and you'll be in a much, much better position to, to nail the class and to, to get the grade um, that you desire. Um, and also, you know, this is another thing is that, uh, you know, that there was a like this really good organic uh, chemistry professor that I had. Uh, I took him for organic one and I also had him uh, as my undergraduate research advisor. You know, he had this web page and he had uh, he had, um, you know, this this part of his web page that says, you know, like, how do I do well in this class? And part of that, uh, a really, really important part of that page that really kind of stuck out to me was to um, well, there were two things. One of them was to set realistic goals, right? So, you know, getting an A in organic chemistry might not be, because it is a difficult class, getting an A in organic chemistry might not be a very realistic goal, depending on other stuff that you've got going on in your life, right? If you're taking like five other classes, which is usually people don't do that. Usually people take like four, maybe five classes at the most. But if you're taking like, you know, four, additional classes that are all like upper level and require a boatload of studying. You know, if you're working your way through school because you don't want to deal with like student loans and all that crap. And by the way, if you don't want to deal with student loans, good on you. I salute you for working your way through school. That is going to pay off in ways that you, it's, it's hard to even fathom. I mean, student loans are absolutely toxic, debilitating, and they cripple people. But, um, kind of lost my train of thought. I just, I just drew a blank there for a second, but, oh, okay. So what I'm saying is, you know, if you have other things going on in your life, or if you're like a parent, you're raising a child, something like that, you know, if you have like all these other things that are keeping you busy, you know, an A might not be a very realistic goal for you. Perhaps you should shoot for something more realistic. Um, it's up to you to sort of figure that out. Um, there's nothing wrong with sort of aiming high, but at the same time, I don't want, I wouldn't want anybody to um, sort of like set themselves up for failure or to sort of have a crushed dream because, you know, they worked so hard and didn't accomplish, you know, <laughs> didn't accomplish a goal that from the beginning was unrealistic. And the other thing that, uh, the other thing that was on this, um, this professor's webpage of, you know, how do I do well in this class was to take care of yourself, you know, make sure that you're eating enough, uh, make sure that you're eating properly, uh, make sure that you're sleeping enough, um, make sure that you're you're exercising enough make sure that you're drinking enough water you know if you, if you take medication that you need make sure that you're on top of your medication 
you know, take good care of yourself. And, you know, because sometimes we think that it'll pay off for us to, you know, pull the all-nighter or, you know, like study, study really, really hard at the expense of our own health. But that always comes back to bite you in the ass. I, um, I promise you that. So hopefully that was a good answer. I know it was a little long-winded, but, I, you know, I'm kind of really passionate about this topic, you know, about how... Um, you know, about how I, I really dislike the sort of, um, you know, quote unquote pre-med approach to, to studying organic chemistry. So uh, anyway, um, I hope that was a good answer. And um, all right, so let me, let me move on to uh, some other messages in the chat.